Um, I'm going to move on. Um, the fourth observation about entrepreneurs and um, resilient entrepreneurs is that they have a growth mindset. Sorry, fact, sorry Grace. Um, before you go there, uh, Liesl Marie Reed raised her hand. Sorry, I just spotted it now. So okay. right, let's go ahead, Liesl. Go for it. Go for it, Liesl. Yeah. Hi, Grace. Um, I just wanted to just tie in something that, you know, the sense of purpose that you mentioned from the beginning of the session. And yes. now to the whole adaptability, I feel that those two are really strongly, strongly related. Because for, for me, what happened is I had this beautiful business plan and started my own company and then the, the whole pandemic thing hit. And actually it was all just bubbles. To be honest, if I look mm. at the business plan that I had then, it was all just bubbles in the air. Actually, I had to go and find what is my purpose? What is the foundation? Mm. So that the adaptability mm. Happens, you kind of have a very solid foundation to go back and fall back on something, and that's yourself. Yes. Especially as a solopreneur or a free freelancer, and especially last night with the president's speech, I think we all were holding our breath for like an hour, and um, because it meant another wave of change. So yeah, that was just the two key things that really connected. Wonderful, Thanks. absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so, okay, so the fourth observation of resilient leaders is that they have a growth mindset. And this lies at the heart, I believe, of resilience, because everything starts with the way um, we view, with the way we think. Um, and so it requires a cognitive flexibility, it requires a reframing, um, it requires keeping perspective in terms of cognitive um, flexibility, developing a growth mindset requires a mental shifting that allows um, the individual to adapt and um, inst to instantly changing situations. Uh, it provides the um, ability to flex your approach and um, develop new ideas. And um, a mindset actually describes the beliefs that we hold about ourselves. And mindsets are often described as, or can be described as fixed or growth. And so a person with a growth mindset um, believes that there are abilities that can be developed and improved upon. While a person with a fixed mindset believes that um, the qualities are fixed. In fact, they believe, yeah, uh, in fixed threats. And so I thought we could probably look at that diagram, um, Liesl, that beautifully demonstrates a, a fixed versus a growth mindset. Liesl, you, uh, okay, sorry, I thought it was the wrong thing, but it's coming up now. <laughs> Maybe you want to put it on full screen. It will, I, I will not go into full screen, Craig, because then it becomes small again, then people can't okay. read. Okay. Okay. Shall okay. we just move through it slowly then? Or? Yeah. Maybe, do you want to talk through this, Grace? Yes. 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 Okay. So a growth mindset believes intelligence can be developed as to opposed to the fixed mindset that believes you're either intelligent or not. So a resilient entrepreneur with a growth mindset um, has a desire to learn and embraces challenges and persists in the face of um, persists in the face of challenges as opposed to just giving up easily. Um, a growth mindset sees effort to mastery as opposed to the fixed mindset that. Um, sees effort as, as fruitless. Um, also, growth mindset learns from criticism, um, unlike a fixed mindset who ignores um, useful feedback. And um, the person with the growth, mind, growth mindset learns from criticism, and as I said, and um, as opposed to, to a person who doesn't we ignores feedback. Um, the person with the growth mindset actually is inspired and learns from others' successes. Um, the person with a fixed mindset plateaus early and achieves less than their full potential. 
um, as opposed to the person with the growth mindset, they reach higher levels of achievement because they constantly are, are learning and open to change. And um, thank you, Lizel. Um, okay. So how can you achieve then. a growth mindset? And, and you know, we, we live on a continuum. We never just have a growth mindset or a, um, an, you know, a negative mindset or fixed mindset. There's a continuum. And it's good to be able to check ourselves where we are. Um, and, and one way you can do that or um, to move towards a growth mindset is by using techniques such as um, a growth mindset reframes, as I said, and um, positive and negative thinking can impact on our mental health and our ability to be resilient. Reframing is a key resilient is key to resilience and in maintaining a growth mindset. Um, it is a technique that provides the resilient entrepreneur and individual with the choice to interpret challenging events and situations as opportunities for growth. And so by reframing negative thoughts or experiences, um, entrepreneurs can assign more powering, more realistic meanings um, to adversity. So for example, before we get to the examples at the bottom here, um, for example, last week I was working with Liesl on preparing for today. And I kept, you know, telling her that I'm not, wasn't very good technically. And um, I must have said that a few times because towards the end of our discussion, Liesl said, Grace, stop that. And um, she said, you said that about five times. Um, and, you know, I thought about it and she was absolutely right. So how could I have, um, instead of saying I'm technically challenged, what else could, what other language, uh, more empowering language could I have used? I could have probably said, I haven't yet learned to master all the technical aspects um, of operating on a Zoom. Um, for instance, but with a little bit of help, I will learn and um, I will master it. So that's reframing. And um, we know now that through various interventions like reframing, we can actually change our mindsets from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset in a way that um, leads to increased motivation and achievement. Let's, let's look at reframing um, and maybe you you can come up with your own words that you would know you know maybe less empowering words and um, we'll work through that so the first one I give up the more empowering or in reframing that you could say I will try a different strategy um, or there's no point in trying if I'm going to fail. A growth mindset will, see, will say, I see failures as opportunities to learn and to reassess and to do better next time. I'm just pulling out um, Liesl from this. I, I love this example from, from Guy Harris. He says, would you prefer to work with a company with a disciplinary code or, or a code of good practice. So that's kind of the two corollaries. That's of a very good. Positive, very good point. Yeah. 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 I think we've heard, I've heard this quite a bit. There is so much competition. I will never make it. And I worked in the hospitality industry, man, it's competitive, but boy, do you need that competition because it helps you to refine your own offering. Um, but also to identify um, your niche and um, so that you can have your own exclusive company and uh, customer base. The other one we hear a lot of is I do not have money to scale my business. There are many ways to scale my business is another way of looking at it without having a lot of money. Anyone else want to share their own? Uh -huh. employee, employee relations rather than industrial relations. Mm. Absolutely. 
Great. I just want to comment, comment, sorry to interrupt. I just want to comment on um, you, one of the very important ref roles reframing plays in my life. Uh, and, and, and I know in others as well, is that it's helping me to reprogram my subconscious mind. So um, I can change, I can literally change my belief system by reframing how I view the world and how mm -hmm. the language mm -hmm. I use, the choice words I use, etc. cetera. Um, and, and why I pointed out to Grace last week that, hey, you've said this five times, you know, you've, you've, you've convinced yourself that you are technically exactly. disabled. So that's for me, reframing is highly valuable from, from that perspective. I thought I just wanted to share with you. Sure, sure. Yeah, if I could also just come in. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm 60 years old. And so, or let me rephrase that. I'm 60 years young. And so... <laughs> I would never have thought. <laughs> yes. And so what that's also a mindset you know that you you i mean a pensioner it's like um you know one's sell by data has been reached and so i say even though i don't feel it that i am so excited about what lies ahead for me for the rest of my life i am so excited about opportunities awesome. that i yeah. haven't yeah. identified yeah. before and the more i'm saying it the more i'm seeing the opportunities and the more genuinely sure. excited excited i can be about communicating that Fantastic. so you know just with ageism thing is, is something as well that's there. i mean mr harris is on the call is is probably older than 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 the rest of us and <laughs> and he's he's inspired me many times so mm -hmm. ageism yeah. is not a negative <laughs> is there anybody I'll else who would like them. to Sorry, yes. No, yes, no. it comes with a lot of wisdom, and wisdom you can only really achieve, you know, by putting in the time. <laughs> yeah. Naomi, I, have you seen that? It's in refinement, not retirement, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> refinement, not retirement. That's excellent. Yeah. Any other examples anybody would like to share before we move on? I think uh, the world has presented us with ample opportunity to reframe how we viewed our old reality, which yeah. literally changed overnight. Um, and and yeah, to see new uh, uh, what you know, for me it was about looking at the doom in in a positive light and seeing what are the new opportunities that's being created for me from this uh, lockdown challenge that we're experiencing. Um, and, and that reframing literally also opens the mind to see mm -hmm. opportunities then and be creative. Shall we move on? Yeah, and it is about also perspective. Um, a growth mindset keeps um, uh, it's about keeping perspective, especially during times of change and uncertainty. I'm thinking back to the Holocaust survivor, Edith, and... Um, you know, she was in her book, The Choice, um, that I would highly recommend. Um, she speaks about a time when um, she was four, 14 and when her family, she was separated from her mother. Her mother, unbeknowingly to all of them, were on, the, on her way with her father to the gas chambers. And her mother turns around because she was separated from Edith and she calls back to Edith and says, Edith, remember, they cannot take your mind away from you. And you know, that kept Edith going. And I mean, as I say, she is, she's a survivor. She's 95 today and, and still going. And, um, but it's the mind, the power of the mind. And also keeping that perspective that she had, she um, remained hopeful and right to the end. Um, so having a growth mindset means keeping perspective during times of change and uncertainty. And um, so it's important during those times to just take a step back because we become so overwhelmed um, if we just go back to just before lockdown. I mean, everything just shut down and um, everything seems so out of your control, um, you know, but it's to take a step back and see the big picture. And, um, and be aware of our attitudes and what we tell ourselves, as um, Naomi pointed out as well, you know, because our attitudes impact our behavior and our behavior 
impacts our actions and our actions um, impacts our results and overall performance. And so um, resilience is about embracing a positive mindset as opposed to a negative mindset because your mindset determines your ability to succeed. And we know from neuroscience that we are able to change our thinking. Our brains are pliable. Um, we can increase our neural growth and create new neural pathways by the actions we take. So for instance, um, um, we can invest in making actions good choices, reframing our negative thinking, um, finding new perspectives, being curious and developing and practicing mindfulness, um, appreciation, um, and having a positive that can have a positive impact on not only our mental, but emotional and um, physical well being. So um, I want to invite you to reflect on this question what limiting thoughts um, would you most like to change? And how will you do that? What limiting thoughts would you most like to change and how would you do that?